Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at yet another user submission by Hank717 over on osforms.net. I do want to give a huge thank you to him once again for sending all of these out to me. I mean, this is the uh, third one that he's offered to uh, send out to me, or not really send out to me, but to send over to me to do uh, a video on. This one right here is called Last XP 20. Um, you may have noticed in my original video on uh, the Windows 98 uh, unintended boot CD, I briefly mentioned this and said that we would be getting into this a little bit later, and well, today's finally that day. Um, this is apparently a super ultra modified version of Windows XP. It sounds like there's just a ton of extra stuff um, that has been added into this. He says that it actually seems to use the same like install system that's using uh, XP Gold. It uses some open source software to uh, do that sort of portion of the setup better than even some of the paid solutions that he's seen. Um, and yeah, he said that this was actually modified by uh, someone else on a different form site that he was on. I don't think it was on OS forms. I think it was on, you know, like some other form site where this originally came out of. And you can see here by all these screenshots, there's just a uh, ton of, you know, different options. There's actually a built-in uh, older version of Hiren's Boot CD, which is kind of interesting as well, based off of Windows 98. Um, there's just a ton of software in here. I mean, you can see here, this is kind of like the silent setup thing. I mean, we're going to be getting into all of this later. I do kind of like to do this, you know, a little bit blind to where um, that I'm kind of experience it, uh, experiencing it with you guys, you know, so it's not really like I know uh, like everything about it. You know, there's some stuff that I do want to kind of, um, you know, save for having my first reaction. So if that makes any sense, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So I've already created a uh, virtual machine here with the Windows XP professional preset. So, you know, it's nothing, uh, you know, super special. It's got 512 megs of RAM. It's got a 40 gig hard drive and a single core processor. And we're just gonna go ahead and uh, start it up here. I do have the ISO file mounted. So right here is the uh, start screen. It's calling itself last XP 20. And we're going to want to, I guess, press space for the GUI menu. So yeah, check that out. So we have a built-in GUI menu. Um, the mouse is a little bit, you know, freaking out, as you can see there. Um, but we've got a, a couple of things. We've got, you know, obviously an option to boot from the hard disk. We've got a uh, install OS menu, a tools menu, and Windows XP Live. So I think before we go ahead and install it, I want to see what Windows XP Live is about. So let's go ahead and start that. And it just tells you right here, Windows XP Live is Windows XP on a CD. All of your drives are recognized and many programs are available to help diagnose and fix problems. Very minimal version of XP. Oh, so there's Windows XP Live and Micro. So I guess Micro is um, with even less stuff than what XP Live. So let's just go ahead and start XP Live here and see what this is all about. And see if this is any similar. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be very similar to micro or not micro xp uh, mini windows xp which can't which comes on the hirens boot cd i'm sure if you guys have uh, used that you'll know what i'm talking about but um like i always say and like i always do anyway i'm gonna try to um go through these pretty quickly because there is apparently a lot to talk about on the cd so i kind of want to get to that as well um so we're stuck here on please wait and we already have a uh clue here to show you that this is not uh, official by Microsoft. We have uh, this non-default Windows XP background and it's doing uh, a lot of stuff. It comes up with this question. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff here. Hi there, the PE is now ready to use. I assume portable edition. Um, Pre-installation environment? I don't know. A, a lot of this stuff, okay, you can see it's already giving us a problem it's saying we're low on virtual memory, but there's no shortcuts to anything on the desktop, but if we go into start, yeah, you can see here's kind of the list of all of those programs. So, um, it does look pretty similar so far. I mean, some of the programs that are on here to Hiren's Boot CD, but I mean, you can kind of see what we've got. We've got like some diagnostic tools, we've got some disk tools, files, um, some folder tools, I guess, even some games on here. Um, We've got an option to change the screen resolution, so there's some batch strips. Let's see if it actually works. Let's go to, oh, there's not even a, like an option for 1920 by 1080, so. Um, oh, is this one? No, there's not one in there either. Yeah, we can only go to uh, 16, 1680 by 1050 with 32-bit color, so. It is uh, installing some stuff right here. Um, we'll see what, is this based on, 
looks like. Oh, there's not even Winver on here, so we can't see Winver. Actually, well, we can launch... Uh... Oh, come on. I don't want to show desktop. We can run uh, the command prompt and do a uh, version. And, well, it says right up there, version 5.1.2600. I think that is, if I recall correctly, is that the RTM? Yep, XP2600 is the RTM. I, I was somewhat correct there. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know, they've obviously modified this a as well. So... Yeah, it's got a built-in Windows XP Live boot CD. All right, so we are back at the last XP boot menu right here. And what I want to do now is before we go ahead and actually install it, I want to actually show you uh, what is inside of, of the tools menu. So when we go in here, you see we've got um, a well, you know nine different options here. We've got a few programs for hard drive cloning, some for you know hard drives, uh, bad sector repair. Um, we, and we do have the Hirons boot disk 9.5, so a pretty old version of the Hirons boot CD. The newest version is 15.2, as of this video at least, so that gives you a, a little bit of idea of how old that this last XP image is, because this um, is, uh, you know, has Hirons boot CD 9.5 on here. We also have a uh, version of uh, Memtest x86, a version of Partition Magic and Spinrite 6 which is will allow you to verify and test the physical magnetic media of a hard disk and uh, it will warn you of you know any issues that you could face in the future so that is pretty cool but what i want to do here is actually go into the hirons boot cd because hank did mention this in his pm and said you know that it is pretty cool so this is it uh hirons all-in-one boot cd version 9.5 so so far we've got not only all of those tools on that previous menu but we've got hirons boot cd we have a uh, mini version of Windows XP that's on here and in this version of Hirons with all of these other tools he said that there is a mini version of Windows 98 that boots off of this CD so this um, like last XP CD really has a, a ton of different options for diagnosing and fixing computer problems so I'm gonna go ahead and find the um, Windows 98 I think it file managers maybe yeah, mini windows. Here it is. So we're going to go ahead and just boot this up and see what this is all about. So we've got Windows 98 RAM settings, Windows 98 with NTFS support, or start Windows 98 from RAM drive. I guess, well, let's see what the settings are. So we've got, okay, so you can do it with uh, a 22 meg hard drive, you know, obviously like the RAM drive. So what it's going to be temporarily writing to. So if you had like a low amount of RAM, I guess you could like you know decrease the size so we'll go ahead with the 100 meg ram drive why not and so it's going to go ahead and you see it is uh extracting some stuff there it, it does have some prompts but it's all automated um and we have a uh, windows protection error you need to restart your computer while initializing device shell so maybe that option doesn't work let me just go ahead and restart this here and uh see if uh that hopefully won't happen again because i would actually like to see um what's got so yeah this this mouse is a little bit uh you know wonky here but okay hirons boot disk we'll do file managers mini windows and we'll just do option three because uh, i guess that has like the default settings so yeah here we are booted into mini windows 98 and you can see we've already got uh, some tools on here. We've got a shortcut to the uh, MS DOS prompt. We've got a defrag tool, which is probably the one built into Windows. Uh, we've got a shortcut to Explorer, uh, the Seven Zip File Manager, Solitaire. That's spelled wrong. Uh, that's you know kind of interesting. Uh, a shortcut to Scan Disk. There's not really any. I mean, we have uh, the VC File Manager, but besides that and Seven Zip, I don't really think there's any. Let's go into all programs here. Yeah, so there's not really as much stuff as like the new Hirons Boot CD uh, has with like the Mini Windows XP. It's got all those tools. This really only has some of the uh, regular stuff that comes with Windows 98, and then it's got a few add-ons like Seven Zip and a few antivirus uh, scanning programs here, um, and some games. Five Row is an extra game that was added in here that's not you know regularly built in the windows so um yeah let's go ahead and i don't think let's go ahead and just do winver and see yeah okay so winver is not even in here so we'll go ahead and run the uh, command uh, interpreter here and we're gonna or not cmd i want to type ver so ms thought 7.1 uh it doesn't say what windows version is i give you a type winver no bad command 
Uh, can we... So, it, this is based on 7.1. Okay, so here we go. Windows 98 Second Edition registered to uh, Hyrun, and there's, I guess, his old web address there. And so, it's saying it's got 446 megs of RAM. And, yeah, so it's based on 98 Second Edition 4.10.2222. So... Yeah, that is, that is pretty cool. So we have two fully bootable versions of Windows on this disk. We've got 98 and XP, uh, plus all of the other tools that Hiren's Boot CD comes with, and plus all the other tools that last XP uh, in, in that tools menu, what it comes with. So there's a, just a, a ton of tools on here, like I said. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just, you know, uh, restart here. And... Yeah, so that is uh, the Hiren's Boot CD that he mentioned, and let's just go ahead and get on with the installation. We're just going to go ahead and go to the Install OS menu. I want to see what this is about. So, we've got um, some options here. Last XP with extra RAID and uh, SATA drives, or SATA drives, you know, however you want to pronounce it. We've got one with standard drivers and more info, which I recommend that you try installing with the extra drivers option. So we'll go ahead and just do that. We're going to get some extra drivers and see what this is about. And we're going to see if this is automated. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't think it was advertised as being automated, but we'll see uh, what it's all about here. So set up is starting Windows. I mean, this is obviously pretty, you know, pretty standard so far. I'm sure, I mean, I've seen this a billion times. I'm sure you guys have seen this a billion times. It's the same, you know, boring Windows XP setup uh, that, I, I mean, usually with these custom CDs, uh, the first, like, sort of NT-style portion of the setup with, like, the blue background and all this isn't really modified at all. I mean, they might change, like, the name, like, where it says Windows Setup, they might change it to, like, uh, like in Windows XP Gold, they uh, changed Windows XP Professional to just Gold XP Setup. So we're going to get, uh, just install it on the unpartitioned space, we're going to do a quick format, because, again, we're in a VM, so we don't have to worry about checking all of like the drive sectors and everything and so it seems to me at least that we are taking a little bit longer to do this and that is most likely because it's copying some extra uh modified files and, and things that aren't normally with windows xp i assume that the ui after this when we get to the user information um entering portion of the setup. I don't know if that's really the best term to use, but you know, the one that comes after this, um, I think it might have some more signs that this is a customized ISO and not something done by Microsoft. I believe from what Hank was saying in his PM that it does. Um, so we're at 99% here, we're, we're done with that. So it's going to initialize the configuration and it's going to restart the computer and uh, well, there's a, a little bit of a, of a notice right there, besides for the last XP boot screen, it did not ask us or do the, like the 15 second timeout thing, it just went straight into rebooting. Um, but here it is, last XP, so I'm not sure why it's called last XP, maybe as in one of the last versions of XP, I don't really know. Um, but, so we've got a 50, you know, 4 second, you know, about like a minute timeout, we've got uh, some themes here, so we've got two pages of themes. We've got the Windows XP vanilla theme, a superhero theme, a anime theme, a, a, a pro theme, genetics theme. Um, let's go with this one here. This looks kind of cool. So it changes the theme here. It starts to load some, I guess this is where you kind of choose. Okay, so there's again like an auto start. And we're going to go ahead and choose. We're in Western Europe and the United States, but we're not in the same... We're not in the two places at the same time. We're in the U.S. English Australian. Uh, we'll go ahead and change it to English U.S. And we are in the, Eng the... I almost said the English time zone. No, we're in the Eastern time zone. And we'll start. We've got a driver package thing as well. So we've got... I, I guess for like the... I don't know if it's auto-detecting this or if it's... Because you see some of these aren't checked, so uh, I don't know if it's auto doing this based on what hardware we have, or if it's just kind of, uh, you know, like this is all of the default stuff. So this is like those extra driver packs that it was talking about at, at the beginning, so I guess we can do all these, why not? I mean, it won't hurt. Uh, we'll just have like some extra unnecessary drivers, I'm sure. We can, okay, so if you want, you can use some other packs. So if you had another pack or whatever on a different CD, you could load that in here. We're going to... 
Oh, there's a timer. Crap, I didn't even like realize there's a timer down there. Um, so we'll do a widescreen uh, start now. Auto select in one. Click for selection screen. Oh, okay. So it, it has definitely some aspects of it being automated because if you you know like walked away, it would kind of have those timeouts to where if you don't do anything, it'll just install with a default option. So. Here is where we have the Setup Silent WPI, which I guess is uh, the tool that you use to install all these great programs. I don't know if these are like pirated or what, but um, so you can see it, it actually has detected like, I guess it has detected that we're in a virtual machine because it's got VMware Tools version 603 that's going to install. Um, latest hot let's just do all of this can we click this and do all of it no i guess we can't okay so here is where you can kind of um uh i guess simplify it or uh like categorize it into different groups here so this is all of the different packages and if you just want add-on stuff you can click there and here's all the add-on stuff so that's what this all button uh, up, up here was it's not a, a like a button it's just showing you this is the category you're in so peer to peer uh, we've got utorn it gives you a little bit of a description about it uh, theme, we've got some theme options, so like, what's this? Lots more account pictures to use at the top of your start menu, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go and do the Vista sidebar gadgets. System, I'm not seeing, I, I'm, I'm actually very, okay, no, no, I mean, never mind. Okay, VMware Workstation is, yeah, 603, probably pirated. So there's probably some, I was just about to say, I, I'm really impressed there's not any pirated stuff on here, and then I just, I'm like, immediately noticed there's VMware. Uh, workstation, which is again, you have to pay for. So unless it's using some dude's license key that he's okay with, you know, volume licensing, I don't know. But yeah, there's just a lot of stuff in here. I guess we can just do all of it. There is the all button. So yeah, we're going to do all this stuff and see what this is about. Um, and just hit done. And uh, I guess... Oh, now extracting. So now it's going through the setup, which I believe is going to take a little bit because it's got... Because I chose all of this stuff. Oh, this was running in the background. Oh, that's cool. All of these, like, bold blue ones are actually done already. So it was doing that in the background, at least I think, uh, while we were picking all of those uh, of those options. So yeah, very efficient setup. It doesn't just freeze when it's, like, asked for user input. It actually continues in the background, so that's pretty nice. So now it's going to... You know, it has this timer up here, setable complete in approximately 39 minutes. It's got the animated icon down here. We've got a quick launch as well. So I guess you can view. Oh, it's got some games too. So check this out. So can you. Yeah, so it has some built in games you can play while you're doing setup. So, oh, is that Reversi? Oh, is this the original Windows Reversi? Oh, it's not. Um, But yeah, so it's like you you can play a game while it's setting up. How, how cool is that? I haven't seen that before. Um, I don't think ever. I think even like all of the different Linux distros that I've taken a look at, I haven't seen anything like this. So that's really cool. Um, you can play like some games and stuff while you're setting up. So I believe it does have like, let's see if, is there solitaire? There's no solitaire, that's a surprise. But like, I saw Minesweeper, or Mines, where's Mines? Is this, oh, this isn't even like the Windows Minesweeper. This is like some third party program. Portable, portable puzzle collection. So it might be like a whole different collection that they just have in here for, um, you know, you to use, cause it's not, you know, off the hard drive, obviously it's running off of the uh, CD. So. That's really interesting. An easy way like to pass the uh, time while it's setting up, keeping you a little bit uh, entertained with stuff so you can somewhat use uh, the computer. We can do launch task manager. And you probably don't want to end any of these processes, but I guess if something was going wrong or something wasn't working, you could actually go in here and, you know, like end uh, the uh, task or whatever. There's a way, I guess you can close this here. Yeah, but you probably don't really want to do that, because now I guess we can't get it back. Can you press, like... Yeah, so I guess you don't want to close that, because then you just can't get it back, so... Um, but yeah, I'm just going to let this go ahead and finish through the setup process. It might actually take a half an hour, because there's so much stuff that it has to install. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pause the video here, and I will come back uh, once it's finished up. Alright, we just made it. Um, 
it is booting up right now and actually just did restart i just uh, like was literally coming back as it was restarting so yeah um i'm just letting it boot up here we're gonna see what it does next it says windows please wait so yeah it actually didn't take 30 minutes it took about like i don't know 15 minutes maybe um maybe 20 minutes uh but yeah it obviously finally got done which is great um so we're just uh waiting for it to boot up here so any moment hopefully it should do something and oh there's some music going on oh and we have this video i've i've seen this video before this is like for windows vista <laughs> it's gone okay well that's interesting uh Never seen that before. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen that video before, but not ever in uh, a version of XP even. I mean, obviously nothing official by Microsoft, but I've never seen that in... Oh, well, maybe it... Maybe this is a Windows Vista theme. Yeah. So they changed, like, the welcome screen. There's kind of this just welcome text just up here, kind of out of place. But, you know, whatever. It, it played the Windows Vista login sound. We do still have the XP cursor though, or like the Windows Classic cursor, which you could still get in Windows Vista anyway, but yeah, uh, just waiting again. I mean, first boot usually takes a while, so you know, this isn't anything. Oh, now it's doing some hot fixes. Don't sort start menu from setup S. There's, there's 63, see down here where it says like 463, maybe it has, it's gonna go through 63 of these, I guess. Is this like telling you what features it has or if it's, I guess it's installing this stuff. Uh, yeah, going by pretty slow. Um, oh, okay, well if you click on it, it will actually, oh, can we just do skip or no? So this is the automated setup that has to go through all of these. So I guess if something doesn't install, we can click skip and then it moves on to the next one. So like, what, what is this doing? Well, a, a random CMD opened. It's just not doing... Okay, so, yeah, it is going through... I guess it has to... I guess it didn't install those 63 things. It's going to do that now, so... Um, yeah, I guess I'll just probably go ahead and pause the video again, and I'll come back once we're finished with this. I mean, oh, no, wait. Oh, it's setting up personalized settings for Internet Explorer. I don't know if me closing that just stopped it from installing all those programs. It probably did, which isn't really good. Um, but you see, we do have a theme applied. I guess the theme it applies, even like the welcome screen stuff, depends on what you chose at the very beginning. So I chose the the version 20, you know, whatever theme with the icon that looked like this back here. It looks like it's still doing stuff. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and just pause the video here. Uh, um, maybe not. I said that's the second time I said that and then it immediately just finished with what it was doing. So this is it. This is last XP. I don't know if it did it install all those programs or not. I mean, I don't, there's something called first boot that came up. Oh my gosh, there's like, whoa, okay, whoa. It's, Okay, so yeah, VMware Tools, I guess that was VMware Tools, yep. So it says VMware Tools can be upgraded, but you see when I, um, you know, made it full screen, it went ahead and jumped it to 1080p. So, it gives us options to change the, like, the registration info, so like if I want to do Michael and, oh, it's, going, it's one of these where you gotta delete the text, so like osforms.net, and then account name, we can change the account name to Michael, interesting. Uh, network information, computer name, work group home, enable auto run, enable numlock on, disable auto login. So yeah, a bunch of options. Oh, you can change the logon screen too. So it keeps doing stuff. I don't like it's not it's like when I click here, it keeps going away. So yeah, we can change the login screen. I think it was on the last XP. But like, let's change it like this eyeglass one and see what that's about. And this was the start menu sorting you may have seen before where it was kind of like showing you, like, did it actually install all that stuff? I don't, I don't think it did. I, I think me closing that out stopped it from installing all that stuff. But these are organized into like folders. So we've got like, and they each have these icons too. 
So we've got like, and then some of them have subfolders. So like in this, there's a folder for antivirus, spyware, firewall, IP blockers. Normally all this stuff, I'm gonna see if I can restart the setup thing. And like, there's a media center icon on the desktop. Only works on XP Media Center Edition, okay. Um, tweak UI, let's go ahead and start. Oh no, ne never mind. that's not what I'm looking for. So if we do apply, I assume it will... I was gonna go ahead and restart. And just restart explore. So now if you go into properties, yeah, it just totally changed everything around. It's got my name in there, my, my uh, organization. The username is still administrator though, but I'm going to see, I don't know if, yeah, let's do the install apps. Okay, so now it's going to come up with this again. I, I, I just had to go into the CD, so I'm going to do all these, hit done. Okay, now it's going to go through this again. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this sit here and, and go and install all these and not mess with it. And I will come back once it's finished doing that. Okay, so the window, like the install window went away, so I don't know, um, if it finished or if it crashed again, or I mean, not really crashed because I closed it last time, but I'm just gonna go ahead and restart and see, and see what happened. Okay, we got, well, that's an interesting login screen. This looks um very blown up in 1080p. And this video has gone on pretty long, so I'm probably going to be wrapping it up here shortly, but I just wanted to see if these programs installed. But even if they don't, I mean, you can kind of see what it's all about. You know, there is a, like a, 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 a ton of programs. So me personally, what I use this, obviously not on my main computer, but on like a secondary machine, like I usually say, like an older XP machine that maybe you want some extra features or you don't just want regular vanilla Windows XP. You want something that's like, that has more, uh, you know, capabilities. This has more drivers in it. So um, and you can change the login screen. This login screen looks kind of weird, blown up at 1080p, like I said, but you I mean you can easily change that. I don't know if there is a sound that's going to play. Oh, the cursor got really large there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, you can see kind of it's glitching out. I actually don't know if you can see that on the on the uh, on the recording. This OBS doesn't seem to be showing it, but yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and open this up here, and. Uh, Okay, so now we've got a, a, a Nod32 anti Whoa. We've got arrow working now. Look at that. There's some kind of like transparency going on. Arrow glass transparency. I don't know what program that is. But yeah, we've got a Nod32, which is a, a antivirus program that's probably super out of date. Uh, we'll just, sure, we'll go through that. So if we go into... Okay, so we've got, still there's not, I mean, the, the design and edit, there's paint, internet, there is like uTorrent, so yeah, there's some more stuff in here that's not, wasn't in here before, I don't think, so it did install some of it, um, but I think that was error, I'm gonna open up computer here, because I want to see if that was error glass, I think it was, yeah, that is full on error glass, I mean, not really full on, it's not obviously like what was in Vista, but yeah, that's error glass transparency going on, so you can see like the last XP logo behind uh, the window there. So, uh, that is interesting. You, you can see that this somewhat looks like a Vista. Um, I mean, it's got like the Vista icon. So I don't know if this was intended. Yeah. E even this here, it says it's windows XP media center edition, but this is like a windows Vista style, uh, about box and it says copyright. Well, no, cause, okay. Cause uh, service pack three came out in 2007. So I was thinking they changed the copyright date, but it, uh, service pack three, I believe came out in 2007. So, yeah, that is definitely interesting. They have definitely uh, done some work adding some more stuff in here. Uh, you can see there's just a ton of stuff running. There's taskbar, shuffle, visual. Okay, yeah, it's that same uh, true transparency program. I've seen that in like, I think it was in Fly Kite OS 10. I think it was in um, uh, XP Vienna. I think it was in. So yeah, there was there. It's there's definitely. I have seen that uh, that program around. It seems to be like a very popular program. But still, when I when I run the media center thing, okay, now it says, okay, now it works. Before, you know, if you see if if I leave that taken um, or that part of the video, and you you may remember that it said you need Windows XP Media Center Edition. Now it just works, so I don't know what that's about. Um, but 
yeah i mean that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this look at last xp v20 or version 20 or just last xp i do want to again give a huge thank you to hank717 again over on os forms for sending this out to me or for sending it over to me for me to do a video on um as well as for all of that other software that he sent over as well uh, to you know make videos on uh, I just want to thank all of you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video definitely uh, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future and as always guys I just want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video